Today we're going to talk about two great bridge cameras, the Lumix and the Sony FZ1000 and RX100. A bridge camera is really an all-in-one camera which is an attached lens, zoom usually fairly fast, being able to shoot photo and video with a number of customizable features. They really kind of represent an all-in-one traveling um, camera that is very convenient, but uh, we expect to get high quality video and audio from it. This is really for the photographer that's going to edit his photos later, maybe on software, um, maybe a higher level of hobbyist. And there's a lot of writing and uh, material that's going to be coming up here on this 12 minute video, so I would expect you to, you'd want to stop it and look at it and read it and then start it up again. So uh, thanks for watching this and let's get right into it. The two cameras really are very similar in terms of their technical aspects. Um, size of the sensor, size of the images, both have displays that are very similar. The big difference, and the cost is similar, the big difference of course is size. The Sony is about a third the size, mostly because of the smaller zoom lens. And the one feature on the Lumix is it shoots 4K video. Let's have a look at that. Basically both cameras are highly customizable. We're going to put them on a board, we're going to try to take the same photos with the same conditions, side by each with the same settings and uh, see how that compares. Sony, first of all, nice little camera, definitely fits in your pocket. It has a very versatile viewfinder on the back with its uh, beautiful 1.3 megapixel display. Sony has added an extra white pixel to the display that makes it brighter in sunshine. The display flips down, flips up, it flips over backwards on itself so that you can take pictures from the front of the camera or you can hold up um, the camera in a crowd and tip the viewfinder down so that uh, you can see into it. Very versatile. It has a nice uh, flash that tips backwards with your finger. This allows you to bounce the flash off a ceiling for softer effect, not the harsh uh, frontal effect on the camera, uh, typically that you get on a pop-up. Both cameras' bright 3-inch back display is highly customizable. You can scroll through different picture settings, um, different display options, levels, bell, uh, histograms, quite a variety. They both have uh, electronic viewfinders which show real-time data and changes to your exposure or any special uh, creative settings that you may have. This really is handy when you're in bright sunshine outside. You can bring your eye right up to it and it turns off the display and you look and look inside. It saves a little bit of battery. You might want to use it in a darkened room as well. It's a much uh, subtler display. The viewfinder on the Sony powers the camera down when you push it back into the camera. Low light really is where that great big one inch sensor and those fast lenses comes in handy. As the sunshine starts to drop you want to be able to do handheld photography. We're going to start looking at high ISO numbers and compare the noise to data detail. Panasonic is a fairly blocky looking image as if it's been slightly smoothened out. The Sony comes in and you can see a lot of detail. It's a little bit noisy, but there's a lot of detail on that image. Again, this, the Panasonic has that sort of smooth effect and noise reduction is not on. Um, Panasonic, or the Sony comes in again, still a little bit sharper or more detail. 12,800 ISO, it's huge. Um, Sony comes in again, still looking like it's uh, making for a crisper image. Finally, the 25,600, <laughs> it's a great feature to have if you want to do handheld in a dusky light, but uh, you get a lot of noise. You can clean up some of that noise later in uh, post-photo software. Lower light uh, video. Both cameras do a pretty good job. Wind noise is an issue on both of them. We'll talk about that later. 4K on the uh, Lumix is fantastic. Uh, the 1080p, 60 frames a second on the Sony does a pretty nice job as well. You can see how auto white balance is uh, different on both cameras. If we go into areas now with almost no light and extremely high ISOs, we'll start looking at that dome again and see what kind of detail the two uh, cameras pull out. Right now it's a little blurred, probably because there was some movement on the uh, tripod. But if we add that uh, Sony uh, back on top of it, fantastic detail. Getting higher ISOs now, 3200, there's that blocky looking Panasonic. Sony one, lots of detail, same again. 6400, same thing. Put that Sony on there, we see there's still a little bit of crispness being added back into the texture. A little bit of noise too. 12,800, both images are starting to look more uh, similar. 
Um, the Sony seems to have less of an advantage at that point. If we get right up to 25,600 on the Panasonic, yeah, it's not a great image. However, it might give you a chance to do a handheld shot. One 320th of a second is still pretty good. Both cameras have onboard optical stabilization, which really allows you to save good quality images both on video and photo without any degradation. As you start to use the zooms on both cameras, it goes from what's considered intelligent, where it sort of interpolates between the pixels, eventually to digital, where all it's doing now is cropping down into the image. But with the stabilizer on, in both cases, you get you know a workable zoom um, and a much, much improved, stabler image. On the Sony, you do need to choose between uh, the photo and the uh, video zoom, whereas on the Lumix, it's the one stabilizer setting applies to both. The Lumix zooming in on that 16 times zoom is uh, very impressive and as you go into the digital zoom it's actually still a very good image. It doesn't get all broken up and pixely although it does look a little bit smoothened out. The Sony zoom going in, uh, it is a 2.9 times original zoom so using the digital to 11.6 gets a very pixely looking picture. Here we've zoomed in 64 times equivalent to 1600 on the Lumix and uh, a very workable picture still. It doesn't, um, hasn't broken up into uh, little pixels. The uh, interpolation that they use is pretty nice. In the uh, somewhat blurrier 1440, it's considered high definition but not that great. We're going to zoom in on the face in the center of this totem pole on both cameras and just pull out the 10% uh, in the middle there. Compare the two processors. Like we saw in the night shots, the Sony has a lot of detail. Um, the Panasonic is a smoother, more blockier looking image. Um, color rendition, very high on both of those. But it's very consistent with what we saw in the night pictures. The Lumix has native 120 frames per second uh, high def. The um, Sony doesn't have that at the 1920 by 1080. The highest speed on the uh, Lumix is a sixteen thousandth of a second, Sony's is one two thousandths of a second. Both wide angles are the same on both cameras. And as we zoom in on the Sony, uh, the maximum there would be the uh, two times plus the normal zoom. Whereas, of course, on the uh, FZ1000, we still get a great zoom. But that fast zoom lens gives us nice background defocusing. So it's, uh, it's a great uh, shot for taking out distracting background. Time lapse. At current time, there is no native time lapse built into the Sony. Uh, this was speeded up video to show what it would look like. Within the Lumix, you can have multiple time lapse settings, and uh, it's a it's a nice handy feature and gives you a, a low file size for the amount of video that you've compressed into it. Macro, like all cameras these days, it takes great macro pictures. These are about one millimeter crystals in uh, these galena and quartz. Um, both cameras do a great job of it. Generally speaking, the high f-stop numbers are required to get the sufficient depth of field. What I do notice though is the uh, Lumix camera needs a quite a bit more standoff from away from it to get the same picture, whereas the Sony can come up uh, at full wide angle within five centimeters of the picture. Those little topaz crystals are a millimeter across. Both cameras do a very nice job of capturing it with uh, a fair bit of depth of field within that shot, giving you a bit of latitude in terms of focusing. Video quality. The Sony has a variety of formats. Uh, the MP4 formats, not that good. The uh, AVCHD formats are hard to edit on a Sony or on a Macintosh computer, and the AVCS format is very high quality. The native MP4 1440 is not that great. The Lumix has that fantastic 4K. The 4K is unbelievable. It has four times the density of 1920 by 1080p film or video and so you can pull a lot of data out of it. Compare the two shots, the standard high def 1440 by the 3840 by 2160 ultra high def. It's just night and day. There's no, there's, there's really almost no comparison. That 4K comes at a big cost. It's a, it's a big file. It takes a lot of horsepower in your computer to process it. So you may not want to do long videos with it. 
The ABC format uh, is pretty nice. It gives you pretty high quality. It's 50 megabytes a second data rate, so it's a, it's a very high quality image as well. Um, the 4K on the Lumix is 100 megabytes per second, so it's still twice the uh, data density. That shows up when you start to pull an, uh, a frame out. If you start closing in on that central part of the picture where that uh, plane is flying, we'll zoom in on both formats here and pull that image out and see how they compare. It's only 10% of the image, so that's going to be really uh, a really test of its data density. Not bad looking on the Sony. You know, usable, blurry, and a little bit pixely. If we pull out the 4K, you see how it's, uh, you know, the double density of data is uh, very, very effective in, in allowing you to retain a really good quality picture. The camera's having a bit of a hard time keeping up with the focus on those moving watery scenes. I find that's quite consistent with that camera. It has trouble with that. Wind noise is a problem with both cameras. The Sony's built-in mic, uh, you can hear the wind roaring over that. And it was a very, very light breeze. The Lumix has the same issue, but this time I put a mic, you can plug it in, and that greatly reduces the uh, noise. One of the nice things about 4K video is that essentially it's like running 30 frames per second continuous 8 megapixel images. And so you have tens of thousands of images that you can scroll through and pull out easily with a software like Shave Video or something like that. And these are great images. So, which one to go with? Well, the Sony, small, powerful, it's got uh, a great lens, pop-up viewfinder is fantastic and has tons of customization. From the uh, photo side, it's a great gatherer of light at night. I think a better product than the uh, Panasonic. The native formats of video though are not as user-friendly and uh, I'd wait until 4K, real 4K was available on this camera and it needs a mic input jack. But, you know, a great one for putting in your pocket and great for traveling. I think it's the best pocket camera I have ever seen. But uh, definitely limited on that zoom. Um, keeps it small. The Panasonic Lumix, if you don't mind carrying a little bit of extra weight, is unbelievable. That zoom is so powerful and so fast. Uh, the audio input jack is fantastic for doing any type of special event or a wedding or anything where you want to have options with that. And, the, of course, the 4K video is insane. You know, it just does not get any better than that. You can edit it, you can pull photos out of it, you can uh, mix for super crisp video if you're long enough the uh, horsepower in, a com in your computer to do it. And it's the future. So you've got the future now with the Lumix, or you might want to wait a while with the Sony. I think it's coming in that one as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. I think that uh, both of these are great cameras. You wouldn't probably be disappointed by either one, but that 4K, having the real 4K in the Sony, uh, it's a matter of time. And... Uh, Thanks for watching.